Doxycycline and minocyclines are probably the most commonly used tetracyclines in clinical practice, followed by tetracycline, demiclocycline, and tegacycline. I will leave tegacycline for a bit now. Tetracycline use has been mainly reserved for H. pylori treatment and acne treatment as well. Demiclocycline is mainly used to induce nephrogenic diabetes insipidus as a possible treatment of SIADH. Let's now focus a bit more on dexycycline and minocycline. They come in IV and oral forms. Minocycline is dosed 100 mg once daily while doxycycline 100 mg twice daily. Both share a similar spectrum. They cover a wide range of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria include community-acquired MRSA but not enterococci. Gram-negative coverage does not include Pseudomonas or ESBL-producing bacteria. They do also cover atypical bacteria including mycoplasma pneumonia, chlamydia pneumonia, and chlamydia trachomatis, making them suitable agents to treat community-acquired pneumonia and non-gonococcal STDs. They also cover a wide range of common zoonotic pathogens and tick-borne disease like Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Salmonella, Procella, Cholera, Coxilla burnetti, the Q fever, Toleremia caused by Francisella tolerances, both also used in the treatment of acne vulgaris and acne rosacea. Now, how about tigicycline? Tigicycline comes in IV form only. It has a broader spectrum compared to other tetracycline. It covers gram-positive, gram-negative, and anaerobes. Its gram-positive coverage include MRSA and enterococci, including vancomycin-resistant enterococci VRE. Its gram-negative coverage includes ESBL-producing bacteria, carbapenemase-producing bacteria, but does not include include pseudomonas. Meanwhile, its anaerobic activity includes bacteroid fragilis, making it appropriate for intra-abdominal infections. Remember this, you should never think of tigicycline as a first or even second line agent. It should be reserved for multi-drug resistant bacteria whenever it's suspected. Most institutions require infectious disease consultations and approval to dispense tigicycline. All tetracyclines should be avoided in pregnancy. All tetracyclines are safe in hepatic impairment and do not require any dosing adjustments. Same applies in renal impairment except for tetracycline which requires a renal dosing adjustment. All tetracyclines should not be given to children less than 8 years old because the risk of permanent teeth discoloration. There is one exception for this, which is doxycycline. The American Academy of Pediatrics permit the use of doxycycline in all ages, as long as the course is shorter than three weeks. A patient with allergy to any member of tetracycline family is considered allergic to all of them. Pill-induced esophagitis can occur with the pill form. This can be prevented by taking it with plenty of water and to remain upright for the next 15 to 30 minutes after taking the pill. And remember, minocycline can cause vertigo. Thanks for watching.